Chapter 26 Now some messengers from Ziph came back to Saul at Gibeah to tell him, David is hiding on the hill of Hakila, which overlooks Jeshimon. So Saul took three thousand of his best troops and went to hunt him down in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul camped along the road beside the hill of Akela near Jeshimon, where David was hiding. But David knew of Saul's arrival, so he sent out spies to watch his movements. David slipped over to Saul's camp one night to look around. Saul and his general, Abner son of Ner, were sleeping inside a ring formed by the slumbering warriors. Will anyone volunteer to go in there with me? David asked Ahimelech the Hittite and Abishai, son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother. I'll go with you, Abishai replied. So David and Abishai went right into Saul's camp and found him asleep, with his spear stuck in the ground beside his head. Abner and the warriors were lying asleep around him. God has surely handed your enemy over to you this time, Abishai whispered to David. Let me thrust that spear through him. I'll pin him to the ground. And I won't need to strike twice. No, David said. Don't kill him. For who can remain innocent after attacking the Lord's anointed one? Surely the Lord will strike Saul down some day, or he will die in battle or of old age. But the Lord forbid that I should kill the one he has anointed. But I'll tell you what. We'll take his spear and his jug of water and then get out of here. So David took the spear and jug of water that were near Saul's head. Then he and Abishai got away without anyone seeing them or even waking up, because the Lord had put Saul's men into a deep sleep. David climbed the hill opposite the camp until he was at a safe distance. Then he shouted down to Abner and Saul, Wake up, Abner. Who is it? Abner demanded. Well, Abner, you're a great man, aren't you? David taunted. Where in all Israel is there anyone as mighty? So why haven't you guarded your master the king when someone came to kill him? This isn't good at all. I swear by the Lord that you and your men deserve to die because you failed to protect your master, the Lord's anointed. Look around. Where are the king's spear and the jug of water that were beside his head? Saul recognized David's voice and called out, Is that you, my son David? And David replied, Yes, my lord the king. Why are you chasing me? What have I done? What is my crime? But now let my lord the king listen to his servant. If the lord has stirred you up against me, then let him accept my offering. But if this is simply a human scheme, then may those involved be cursed by the lord. For you have driven me from my home, so I can no longer live among the lord's people and worship as I should. Must I die on foreign soil far from the presence of the lord? Why has the king of Israel come out to search for a single flea? Why does he hunt me down like a partridge on the mountains? Then Saul confessed, I have sinned. Come back home, my son, and I will no longer try to harm you, for you valued my life today. I have been a fool and very, very wrong. Here is your spear, O king, David replied. Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord gives his own reward for doing good and for being loyal. And I refused to kill you even when the Lord placed you in my power, for you are the Lord's anointed one. Now may the Lord value my life, even as I have valued yours today. May he rescue me from all my troubles. And Saul said to David, Blessings on you, my son David. You will do heroic deeds and be a great conqueror. Then David went away, and Saul returned home.